Hiding in a hangar south of York, tucked away under sheets of polythene, lies a shiny Harrier. No ordinary aircraft, XV-471 was a race winner. In 1969, she made world headlines thanks to an extraordinary transatlantic flight with RAF test pilot Tom Leckie Thompson at the controls. The Daily Mail decided they wanted to have an air race, either from the GPO Tower to the top of the Empire State Building or from the top of the Empire State Building to the GPO Tower to commemorate the first ever crossing of the Atlantic by all Cock and Brown in 1919. And uh, so the, the, the Harrier was going to take part in that because we wanted to show they could traverse huge distances and just be ready to go into combat immediately. I took off just after seven minutes past ten from St Pancras and I was at 36,000 feet taking on fuel from a tanker at ten past ten, just north of Salisbury. During the flight, she was refuelled 11 times by an air tanker fleet and, after three and a half thousand miles, landed by the East River in Manhattan. The Harrier was a radical prototype with vertical short takeoff and landing, or VSTOL technology. I was met by a police um, motorcyclist. I jumped on the back of his motorbike, went to the bottom of the Empire State Building, and then up on a lift up to the first, I think it's 88 floors, and then you have to change lifts to, to get the last few floors up to the top. And I checked in at 6 hours, 11 minutes and 57.15 seconds. Half a century later, and slightly the worse for wear, this race-winning Harrier was bought by jet enthusiast Chris Wilson, who wanted to restore the plane to her former glory. Over the years, we've restored a number of Harrier aircraft, and uh, this one had quite an interesting history and great provenance, and for what we do, restoring aeroplanes, it was like um, a holy grail item, really. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to to get your hands on an aircraft like this and then restore it. And uh, that was a big dangly carrot really, to go out there, get it, and then uh, give us the opportunity to restore it back to its former glory. Stripping her down was the first challenge. There were 17 layers of paint covering the aircraft and none of the traditional methods seemed to work. We uh, stumbled across uh, a gentleman who could soda blast the entire aircraft. Uh, it's a fairly new technology for use on aircraft, but using very soft food grade soda, removed all the paint back to bare metal, but created zero damage to the uh, surface underneath. And uh, even to the point of those original pencil marks and, um, and part numbers written on components, and the soda removed the, the paint, but uh, left the, the markings underneath. It gave us the, uh, a brilliant blank canvas for the refinishing work. And this is ordinary baking soda? Um, basically bi bicarbonate of, of soda. Like you put in uh, cakes? Yeah, like you put into cakes. What you'd have in your kitchen, you just need a ridiculous amount of it and uh, I believe we used three tonnes in total for the whole blasting process. That's a lot of cakes. Once she'd been stripped down, it was time for her new coat. The painting was done at RAF Marham and once complete, Chris's team began the terrifying process of transporting her back north. This was the most pristine aeroplane I've ever seen. It was perfect with not a scratch on it. We had to go down, load it very, very carefully onto lorries, transport it back here, unload it, all without a scratch. It was a little bit twitchy. Um, you know, you're picking up a historic pristine item and putting it onto a lorry uh, where it sits on trestles and formers and there's always something that contacts the paint, but we, uh, we treated it with kid gloves and um, we got it back here without a scratch. How passionate are you about, or how close to this aircraft are you? Yeah, scarily. <laughs> yeah, it's become, um, it's become a real labour of love. Um, having had this aircraft in, in our care for, for five years, we've become quite attached to it, and um, it, it's become quite obsessive getting, the, uh, getting all the details um, absolutely bang on. So it will be a very sad day when the aircraft leaves us, but. Uh, the fact that we've turned something around and um, restored it to its former glory is fantastic. We showed the plane's restoration to the pilot, who will always be associated with her. I can't believe that it needed that much hard work 
to get it back down to the bare metal and then back to its original state. When you come across people to that finesse of effort, that is what I call real workmanship. The Harrier's owner is keen for her to be displayed to the public, but so far they've failed to find her a home and are appealing to any museums who'd like to showcase her ahead of the 50th anniversary of her race to get in touch. Yes, it'd be nice if we, if we could finish this off with me looking at it at its final resting place. Mm.